Welcome to TradeTheNBI.com. This is the channel support is for Monday, March 7th. Well, it was quite an interesting start to the day. Um, we had the construct that, uh, you know, a nuclear plant in Ukraine was hit. That caused an initial market decline. When that proved to be false, the market rallied, but uh, not enough to get back to where it was. And we were already under negative readings here. We already had the MBI magenta below white. Um, and then as it started to move below the 33 level, which now at 30, um, that's clear indication for weakness. And as I talked about yesterday in the report, the expectation of a spider here, meaning uh, pivots just after crossing the cyan, and cyan crosses back up and forms like the little legs with that diamond uh, body there. And sure enough, uh, we started to fade off that. So um, it hasn't changed in that. Now, what we're looking for is critical will be the uh, cross of magenta below yellow. In this particular case on the MDI reading, the fact that the yellow is pivoted up indicates to me that we're probably still likely to stay in this uh, uh, range, which we've been doing for well the last uh, week or so here, uh, even though we've had you know the dramatic dip in that, there's still not enough reasons to be super excited about the market, and there are plenty of downside potential capabilities. Um, we're already seeing, uh, well, as we'll look at it in the charts uh, with the eurozone, you've got uh, liquidity issues that are starting to develop and are starting to become apparent now. Uh, to the market and those uh, knock-on effects start to spread. From an NQ standpoint, of course, technology has been weak because, again, as inflation continues to rise, there's going to be a move to cyclicals or, as we talked about, treasuries um, because, you know, starting the month as it was, we still have uh, potentially the beginning of Monday because new fund money has just started to roll in. So um, the expectation would have seen, you know, some of it move back into the market and maybe that was some of the late-day uh, a little bit of a rally, but a lot of it, uh, as we look at like TLT, um, went to treasuries. So I flipped it over here to the uh, futures contract for uh, crude oil, uh, continuous contract. There it is, uh, 115, just underneath that previous high of the 116. This is really spiraling out of control, and the worse it gets, uh, you have the U.S. threatening. China with retribution if they let uh, the boycott of Russia be voided. They were threatening India. Um, just strange choices as you threaten the rest of the world to try and get homogeny. There's this idea that they think they can bankrupt Russia enough to enforce an overthrow of Putin or whatever, and that's their only game plan. Um, does it matter if it's going to destroy the Western economies at the same time? They don't seem to care because they're not reversing the oil policies or anything like that that would actually bring inflation under control. A uh, pretty simple way to do that. So if they're not willing to do those simple things, you got to ask yourself, why do they want it? Um, Fed certainly can't raise rates because you can't afford the payments on the debt if they do. Um, you know, Russia at least did the appropriate thing, jumping their rates to 20% to at least attract uh, investment attention uh, within the country. Um, it's going to dampen growth, clearly, but they're at least prepared for uh, what's happening. We're not seeing any of that kind of preparation from the uh, U.S. standpoint. There goes gold already back up to its peak. That's this just the beginning of it because, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about central banks wanting to keep you know, gold prices in a reasonable range, but they're not going to be able to control it for too much longer because it's going to become too desired by everyone, uh, especially as uh, this kind of situation happens. Uh, and what I was talking about is the Russians were using the euro oil quite a bit when it came to uh, a lot of their oil transactions and that after having converted. Um, they were buying a lot of European products and therefore a lot of transfer into Europe. Well, you can see what happens when that liquidity and now we're starting to see that uh, overnight loans from the Fed and uh, in the U.S. and that uh, having difficulties with the spreads on swaps and that kind of technical thing where while it's behind the scenes really has an impact and you can't really offer a U.S. bank ECB bonds and that because nobody wants them because they're worthless. Um, and the same with um, most of the banks within the Eurozone. Um, it's a disaster. And 
Now at 109, this was expected. Uh, I've been talking about it for some time uh, between the 111 and 108 range. Uh, it's typically where it would be. The fact that we had pushed outside of it uh, previously, month uh, back or so in the 120 range, this is a significant decline. And it's further to go. But now the question will become once we get below this. Uh, 108 level, and certainly below 105, 104, it becomes really treacherous, as I was pointing out on our Skype chat and that before. So there's a lot of um, situations that are playing out behind the scenes as it relates to this whole Russia situation and um, the ostracization. I mean, they're not even talking about potentially banning um, oil purchases. So if that takes place, uh, well, what if they cut the spigot off to Europe and, that, and what kind of chaos is that going to create globally? Um, it's problematic, especially when you have crude at 115, you get over 120. And by the time you get to 140, 150, as we move towards uh, summer months and that, uh, this is going to be crippling for the economy. It's going to see GDP worldwide just start plummeting. And it, what, that's the problem with it. it. It becomes an accelerant, exponential decline. It isn't a smooth, gentle, like, oh, we're going to lose 1% or 2% GDP. No. Uh, it can have, a, like, an 08 effect where it just uh, becomes crippling. And so TLT, this is a lot of money moved into treasuries and that. Uh, safe haven. It makes sense. Even if you're not getting yield, at least you're not losing uh, equity. And as I mentioned, we would come back here to fill positive extremes from a Bitcoin standpoint. That takes out all the way to the second one and leaving only the dip all the way back to 38 itself. Uh, as the secondary one, um, potentially looks like it might catch a bid here at the 39, though. Um, we'll be able to watch that because I get the dip of orange, just uh, it's still pretty weak on the red DOC, but it's at that uh, negative 23 range almost that you typically get a little bounce back. Uh, that's not to say it'll be sustainable, but um, it certainly happens at that particular spot. But a lot of people expect that with the inflation specter and things like that, that Bitcoin uh, should be skyrocketing. But as we've talked about, this has been more of a speculative parking location for resources and that rather than um, completely an inflation hedge. It sort of decoupled the... Uh, a little bit late last year and we saw that that changed particularly when it got to its peaks and uh, then it just started to become a speculative market and it certainly spiked with the whole Russia buildup that just faded all the way back from that uh, peak. ETH still like it because it still trades beautifully to the algos as well. Um, very clean on the cell signals and when they do catch by but uh, you know, they're neither of them are in horrible shape vis-a-vis uh, -vis what the market uh, has been doing. Still holding on pretty much in a narrow zone for now, so there hasn't been any meltdown, so to speak. The ES from its standpoint, we had the short back from over here that covered again and then tried to put the covered a little one and then took a little gain on a short right uh, briefly there. Um, Right above the 23% and in positive uh, territory, but you didn't get the orange completely dip below the red uh, before it pivoted back up. So, may not be uh, sustainable uh, from a pump up. Intraday here was the news situation that took place very clean from our uh, MBI reading as well as. Uh, DOC was at another bar after and it just cascaded lower, but then when we realized that it really wasn't all that true, uh, ironically, fake news sort of situation, and bought it all the way back up, but then as the market opened, uh, when that took place, uh, uh, started to get some weakness where there just wasn't a whole lot of interest in buying the setups, and we just kept fading softly until, again, that Later in the afternoon, it cut a little bit and then it just kept going. And every time, though, it was doing this positive extremes. So the first start was right there, and another set of positive extremes right here in each of those, filling right back beautifully. Nice and clean from that standpoint. Uh, and then, end of day, Friday buyers lifting it up. Right before, of course, uh, that one wasn't as bad because you only ended up with the one positive extreme that filled uh, right there in the post market. So, pretty clean. 
all in all, super spectacular uh, ranges for us and pretty darn clean as far as uh, being able to uh, ride the waves of uh, some good train moves. So we'll keep up with that and uh, anything new that develops, I will certainly let you know. As always though, trade well, we'll talk to you later.